So brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, it's unfortunately a condition that we're seeing a lot of nowadays and we're really seeing it as the name suggests in the brachycephalic breed. So brachycephalic basically means short face. So French Bulldogs, British Bulldogs, uh, Pugs, any of those shorter, shorter face breeds, uh, we're seeing this, common, this problem quite commonly. Um, and the way to really think of it is the airways in these dogs or the faces pretty much have the same amount of structure in them, it's just being compressed. So imagine driving your car into a, into a wall and that's the sort of situation where you get where everything's compressed and it makes it quite hard for it to function normally. So what we get with um, brachycephalic obstructive airway um, syndrome is we end, it's really a, a bunch of conditions which dogs can have to a greater or lesser, lesser extent. And the reason why this is so important to, to deal with is it can be life-threatening and certainly we get dogs in here either passing away because of this condition or requiring emergency surgery because they can't cool themselves effectively, they can't breathe effectively when it's, when it's hot weather. So starting from the nose, we tend to get um, stenotic nares. So the nostrils are basically partially closed over. And what happens is the nose, the nostrils are quite narrow, but when the dog goes to breathe in, because they've been narrowed, that breathing in process actually sucks the nostrils down even more. And so it becomes quite hard for the dog to breathe in through its nose. So it'll breathe in through its mouth when it needs to really suck in a, a lot of air. Once we get back, back to the mouth, the soft palate is, can also be elongated. And so the soft palate basically is sitting over the, over the roof of the mouth and comes back and normally finishes just before the, the larynx or the voice box here. So what happens when we get the brachycephalic dogs, because everything's pushed back, this soft palate tends to be pushed back as well. And it tends to be pushed back to the point where it's blocking the larynx. So the dog basically has this um, meaty sort of flap effectively going over the larynx, over the entry to the, to the trachea. And that creates quite a, a severe obstruction. So what happens is when the dog starts to breathe quite heavily, because they're really sucking in, we're getting the, the nostrils are potentially getting sucked down, and also this soft palate is getting sucked into the airway at this point, and we're getting to the point where the dog's having to really suck quite hard to, to be able to breathe, and that creates more, more and more issues. So at the larynx, we've got um, some little glandular material there um, called laryngeal saccules, and the increased pressure and negative pressure can actually make them pop out. So you can see we're starting to get a combination of things creating secondary problems. So once these laryngeal saccules pop out, we've potentially got those narrowing the airway, the soft palate narrowing the airway, and the nostrils causing their own problem up here. And the dog can really be struggling to breathe at this point. Something else we can see in these brachycephalic dogs is the trachea, so the windpipe itself can be very narrowed. And the way to really think of that is it's like breathing through a straw. Kind of having that a, a, a fair degree of narrowing kind of is basically really kind of causes problems with the dog being able to breathe in. They're having to breathe in through a much narrower pipe. And this is something we can't actually do anything about. We can't make the airway any bigger once, it, once we've got that narrowed um, larynx, so, sorry, narrowed trachea. So where that we really see a problem with these, dogs which either do too much exercise or on a hot day, they start to pant a lot. Now, dogs panting is part of their cooling mechanism. Um, so you can imagine once we get the shortened sort of um, mouth, the panting's not very effective because the air passing over the mouth only has a very small um, distance to travel. So there's not a, a large distance to really allow that cooling process to happen effectively. So already we've got a compromised cooling. So the dog has to pant more. And so as the dog's panting, we're starting to get issues with the soft palate going down in, into the larynx. The nostrils are getting sucked down. That's creating more and more effort for the dog to breathe. So that panting and breathing effort, that's creating its own heat because that's relying on the muscles. And so that heat needs to be gotten rid of. They try to pant some more and that panting's ineffective. So, and, and we get a real um, spiral of this sort of obstruction, stopping from panting effectively, needing to pant more because they're trying to pant. And the dog's cellar temperatures can just absolutely skyrocket. So we'll get dogs in sometimes 42, 43 degrees body temperature. And that's, that's severely life-threatening. That's where we have to basically anesthetize them straight away. Active cooling, so we're 
ice packing their groin over the main, main blood vessels. Sometimes we're even having to do cold water enemas to cool them rapidly because if their bodies stay at that temperature for even a short amount of time, they're going to experience brain damage, liver damage, kidney failure. It's, it's catastrophic. So what can we do about this condition? I mean, I guess the number one thing is we really need to consider whether we should be choosing to, to breed a lot of these dogs and the more severely affected dogs with these conditions, really, we, we, I guess it's one of these big ethical debates which goes round and round. I mean, a lot of purebred dogs have their own problems, but this is a, a pretty nasty one. And we very often see these dogs coming in for the first vaccinations and, and needing surgery kind of right from the start. So. First thing I would say is certainly, if you're gonna go for one of these short-faced breeds, make sure you you get to see the puppy before you, you get it. Um, check the parents, make sure they've got nice open nostrils, that they're breathing comfortably, they're not snoring excessively or snorting. Um, if we do have, have this condition in a dog which someone brings into us, we can do quite a bit to, to at least improve the situation. So we can do a little um, wedge resection on the nostrils, and basically what that does is just pulls the nostrils open, allows that airway to to function much better. We can shorten the soft palate, so we basically, if it's hanging down into the larynx, we, we surgically shorten it. It's a fiddly little surgery because we're operating right at the back of the, of the mouth, um, but that is something we can do. And if the laryngeal saccules are averted, then we can trim those off, and that can really help things. Now, if we, if we have a mild to moderately affected dog, which we don't operate on, things can actually get a lot worse with age because all this turbulence, all this increased effort can cause these tissues to thicken at the back of the throat. So if you notice your dog is having trouble breathing, it's generally best to um, approach surgery early. We get a better result. We avoid a lot of the secondary problems and it's much, much safer for your dog. Um, doing an anaesthetic on any of these um, dogs does carry its risk because we basically have a poor upper airway, but we modify our anaesthetic protocols. We're very, very careful with them, and yeah, it is something we can do quite successfully. And the risk from surgery is much, much less than leaving these dogs untreated. So over over summer, it's like I say, it's worth being very proactive on these conditions. Um, if you're worried about your dog, certainly get it into a vet. Um, Otherwise, it's very, very important to keep these short-faced dogs cool. So keep them in air conditioning, avoid walking them in the heat of the day. If you find they are getting overly hot, cool them quite actively. So get them into a cool shower, not, don't soak them with cold water. Um, it wants to be just cool water. If you use the water that's too cold, you'll actually contract the blood vessels in the skin and makes it, makes it less effective. Or you can get things like ice packs or bags of frozen peas and pack them into the groin region. And there's some big blood vessels there, which means that you can cool that, the blood down a lot quicker. Um, if you're concerned that your dog is really having trouble, they call your vet straight away. It's a true emergency. Get them to call your vet, get them in there as quickly as possible, and your vet will be able to help you out.